today is a very sad but necessary announcement of that I am leaving New York and honestly it's been so sad for me to go through this decision process and that realizing sometimes in life the things that we need to do and the things that are right to do are actually the hardest things and the things we might not necessarily choose in the moment or want to have right now. So yeah, so much went into this decision. I was going back and forth. Um, me, so me and my roommates all lost our jobs during this pandemic and our lease was up November 30th. One of my roommates decided to move already and me and my other roommate were gonna stay and maybe get another roommate or maybe get a two bedroom apartment. And it's been so much going through this decision thinking like, wow, I really wanna stay in New York. I love New York. But at the same time, financially being in debt, it just doesn't make sense right now. Not having a job. And for those of you who don't know, I loved my job where I worked. The job that I had was so much more than just a job to me. It was very meaningful of where I was working specifically and the mission behind the work that I was doing. So yeah, I got laid off early October. My last day of work. Heading into my old office to gather my things and pack up. It kind of hit me harder being in this neighborhood of like all the memories. Like I loved it here so much. My really beautiful walks during my lunch breaks and the coffee shops around here. workers already cleared out their stuff so we're all pretty much empty. I am probably most sad to take this down. These are all the people I've met here. Bishop Barron, Chrissy Metz, Devon Franklin, of course Cardinal Dolan. The woman who sang the theme song for <laughs> Reading Rainbow, Tina Fabrique, Diane and Nick Marzin from Come From Away. Such a beautiful story. This was the last concert here before everything shut down. James Taylor performed here and it was so amazing. I almost can't leave, like I don't want it to be real, but it is, so all things must come to an end. Got all my stuff. No way of getting back in. Okay, so I'm editing this video now, looking back on myself, and I'm like so dramatic about this. Like, I left my key card, there's no way of getting back in. But it's just my way of. I think I just needed this closure of, okay, I'm closing the door and it's so symbolic of you're closing a chapter in your life. And I just kind of needed this for myself. So many meetings in here. The kitchen. Wow, new COVID restrictions. Marianne. I just have to soak this in one last time. She makes these hilarious cartoons. So iconic. So many memories in here. When our artists in residence would cook dinner or just be around. All the laughter and conversations, stories. The empty gallery. So many amazing art gallery shows in here. 
desk, the chapel. Honestly, one of the biggest blessings working here is having a chapel. Like your office is upstairs. There's this beautiful little chapel. You can come and pray. We had mass in here once a month. I just remember last time being in here praying in March, knowing what was to come, just praying for everyone who was going to be affected in one way or another. Just so many heartfelt prayers said in here, sitting in these chairs over the years. The almost three years that I was working here. I remember my first day of work, some of my coworkers were like, oh, we do prayer every day. And I was like, you have prayer at work? It was so beautiful. Every day, midday prayer, some of us would come down here. It's such a nice way to break up the day. I should probably turn on the lights so you can see. This beautiful piece, Father Frank, who is our gallery curator, makes these beautiful embroidered. If you can look closely, you can see it's thread. And this is one of the artists in residence before I was here. And Oksana, her show is so beautiful. She does these mosaics. First time I was ever here was 2017 when Morgan Freeman was here for the Justice Film Festival. Before I worked here, actually, so I'll never forget that. So we got our front row seats here. It's super exciting. And I started working here in 2018. Alright, was about to leave and I noticed it seems like they blocked this road off so I was gonna grab an Uber so I'll probably have to go to the other side. At the time I was really at peace with it because I realized okay it's just it was meant to happen. It's a performing arts center so Everything else in New York was shut, shutting down and laying off employees and how long realistically would they keep us on the staff, you know, paying us all full-time salaries. So it was bound to happen, I just didn't know when. So yeah, I was working from home up until October because we were doing online programming and we were just waiting to go back, you know, seeing like when things would get better. But as you know, if you live in New York, things haven't gotten any, I mean, things have gotten better but things aren't fully back to normal and we don't know when they're going back to normal. So that was that, losing my job. And then I went online to apply for new jobs and I was browsing through job listings and I was thinking like, okay, I have the skills for these jobs. And I was looking like, okay, I could do like graphic design, marketing, what I was doing before with my skills that I have and with my degree. But I was looking through the job listings and nothing really lit me up. Like I didn't really particularly want to work for any of these companies that I was looking at. And one of the jobs that I looked at even described, they were like, we describe our workplace as aggressive. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna close my laptop and not do this job hunt right now because it's just too much. And sometimes when you have a job that's so specific to what you're passionate about, it's hard to just replace. And sure, I could get any old job working for any company, you know, being a hamster, running around on a wheel, working, working, paying off my student loans, paying rent in New York, not really having family here or any kind of close, I mean, I have friends, of course, but I think it's different when you're away from family. And then you also think about your long-term goals, like what do you want for the future? And for me, I don't think being in New York City at this time, you know, like spending most of my 20s was great, but there kind of reaches a point where it's like all things must come to an end. And it's just kind of that time. Anyone who knows me knows that I love New York so much, but realistically to live here now during this pandemic 
winter in New York is coming and I was just imagining myself being in my room with no natural sunlight or then finding a new roommate and not knowing what exactly I'm getting into with the new roommate situation is just, you know, all being home at the same time during the lockdown is a lot. So for now, or for the time being, I'm going to go to Florida, live with my parents. And I think for me, it's kind of getting over the shame of, not really the shame, but just kind of like, wow, I'm turning 30 years old. This is not where I thought I would be in my life. Going to live with my parents. People are always like, 30 is the best age, and you're established, and you're thriving, and it's just the best. <laughs> So yeah, me turning 30 at the end of November. My lease is also up November 30th. And it just seemed like the right decision right now to move, given the fact that zero income, debt, credit score, just a lot of financial stuff I need to work on before I can really feel comfortable spending more money in rent. And I have to remind myself that sometimes in life our goals change and that's okay. So when I was in my 20s, when I was in my early 20s, I was like, I'm gonna move to New York City, live my life here. And I have to realize that I've done that and it's been such a great time, but it's not forever and that's okay. But it's just been a grieving process. I tell people that it's like going through a breakup because I, I feel like this might sound so sad to say, but I'm like, I loved New York, New York City, like a person. Like, how have I loved a city more than I've loved a person in my life that I've dated before? It's so crazy. It's like eight years of my life that I spent here. And so now, going through the process of, wow, it's, you know, gotta just move on. So yeah, as sad and as hard as it is, I feel like these change life changes are always hard to go through because sometimes we do get comfortable and sometimes we're in the same routine, in the same schedule for a while, but sometimes it's time to just turn life upside down and start over. Yeah, each day that goes on, I'm just accepting it more. Like, okay, it's the right thing to do. I'm making the right decision. I have to just get over that sense of pride, I guess it is, of being like, wow, I'm 30 years old. I'm moving back with my parents. Like, who am I? Never thought I would be this type of person to do that. But we're living in such a time where none of us thought this would happen. So it is what it is. It's not going to be forever. Yeah, as sad as it is to leave, I have a few more weeks left in New York, and then I'll be heading to Florida. So yeah, I think it'll be good for me because the way that I made this decision, I was thinking, okay, I can stay in New York, I can collect my unemployment money and look for a new job or just continue to work on my video skills and do that, do freelance work. But realistically, to do that, there's really a new camera that I wanna buy and new gear. And I was thinking I'd rather spend thousands of dollars on camera equipment than I would rent in New York right now. New York will always be here, I can always come back. And I've been in that apartment for a long time now, so. It's just time and it's okay. I think one of the hardest things for me right now making this decision is that it wasn't entirely my choice, it's just circumstance. And I kind of always imagined myself, I would live in New York for as long as, you know, maybe I would get married and have kids and like cry my way to Connecticut or Long Island or, you know, one of those towns outside of the city to that's better suited to like raise a family and buy a house and all that stuff um, not be so crammed into the city and the whole culture here and the school systems and the money and all that you know kind of to just get away from that at the end of the day I'm okay with the decision that I'm making but the hard thing is again that it like wasn't entirely my choice 